Hello. Oh, it's good to it's good to be with you today. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching, I just appreciate it so much. And I I want to talk to you today about something that I know that everybody is it's going to fit you. It's going to hit you because I want to talk about being in the pit and and what to do when you are in the pit. And and I when I say in the pit, I'm not talking about a physical pit, but I'm talking about, you know, you, you just get so discouraged sometimes. Sometimes in your spiritual walk, the devil defeats you and, and you get all dis, discouraged and down in the dumps and and uh, you lose your joy of your salvation and and you maybe you're going through tests and temptations and trials and things going on in your life or in your family and the next thing you know you're in this you're in this pit and you're despondent you're depressed and you have no joy in life and and uh, and I know that you know what I'm talking about because everybody, everybody, and I don't, nobody's excluded, everybody gets in the pit once in a while. And how do I know that? Well, I know that because the, the Bible tells, it, tells me so. And, and so when the Bible says that, I know it's true. Uh, I want to read you just uh, two verses of scripture here. And uh, it's, it's found in, in Psalms 40. And it says, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock and established my goings. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Now, one of the reasons that that psalm is written by David, no greater, no greater hero of the faith, I don't think, than David. And God even said about David, he said, David is a man after my own heart. And so if you think about it, David writes in this 40th Psalm and he talks about, he says, he brought me up out of a horrible pit. David was in a pit. Now, if the man after God's own heart uh, gets in a pit once in a while, then I know that I know that uh, everybody gets in a pit. Nobody's excluded from from getting in the pit. And so, I don't I don't have to say, have you ever been in one? I know you've been in one, and maybe you're in one right now. I don't know. But if you are, I've got really good news for you. And, and here's the great thing about it. You look at Psalms 40. See, here's something I always like to do, and I hope you remember this. I like to read in the Bible, and then I like to stop and meditate on it and say, now why did the Holy Spirit put that in the Bible? You see, the Holy Spirit's the author of the Bible. Uh, holy men of God spoke by the unction and anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it was all, it was all given by God. And so, uh, I mean, there's lots of things that God could have put in the Bible. I mean, it could be, it could be a hundred million miles thick, but, um, we have this Bible of 66 books and Psalms 40 was included in there. The Holy Spirit wanted it in the Bible and so what I like to do when I read uh, a portion of scriptures, I like to stop, meditate on it and say, now why did the Holy Spirit want that in there? What is the Holy Spirit trying to tell me because he decided that that needed to be in the Bible? So why is Psalms 40 in the Bible? Well, because if you look at Psalms 40, it tells us that... Uh, well, it tells us how what David did to get out of the pit. He says that uh, the Lord has brought me up also out of a horrible pit. And so, so here's the thing we can do. 
is we can look and um, we can do what David did. And, and folks, that's why this is in the Bible, because uh, we can look and see what David did to get out of the pit. He says, David says, God brought me out of a horrible pit. Now, folks, this pit David was in was a bad one. And so let's, let's take a look at it. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll help you. So if you're not in the pit now, hey, stick around. You'll be in the pit uh, sooner or later. It, and the reason I know that is, uh, well, everybody, everybody gets in the pit. But notice the first thing that, that David says. He says, God has brought me up out of a horrible pit. And if you look at, at what he says, uh, he says that he waited patiently for the Lord. He waited patiently for the Lord. Now, if you, if you read the entirety of this, you'll find out that he, first of all, he confessed his dependency upon God. He confessed that, hey, I'm in a pit and I can't get myself out. And so, God, I need you to get me out. I'm looking to you. I'm looking to you to get me out. And, you know, God's so faithful. That's one thing. If you've lived for God for very long, you, you do understand and you know that God is faithful. God is faithful. God loves us so much. And he is faithful. Boy, I feel the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit on my life right now. And, and I just, I just, I don't know whether it's, this is directed at somebody, but I want to just tell you that you need to confess your dependency upon the Lord and tell God, God, I know you are faithful. I know that you're going to get me out of this. And I, I, may, in the, I may be in the pit right now, but I know you're going to get me out of this pit. That's what David did. He confessed his dependency on the Lord. And uh, he, confessed, he confessed his confidence. That's what he did. He confessed his dependency. He confessed his confidence. I know you're going to get me out of this. If you look in the Bible uh, and you look like 4,000 years later or so, there was a man greatly used by God, we know him as the Apostle Paul. And he wrote, uh, you know, Paul was not immune to being in the pit. Paul went through a lot of, uh, Paul went through, well, he gives a litany of all the suffering that he went through for Jesus. Beaten, shipwrecked, hungry, thirsty, uh, all of these things that he went through and uh, had all the, all the weight of the church bearing on him, uh, all the ministry to the Gentiles. And uh, he, uh, Paul was just a human like us, and he went through times when he, <laughs> he, was, he could get in the pit. And Paul wrote, almost 4,000 years after David penned this, Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, he said this, being confident of this very thing, notice that, that he which hath begun a good work in you will, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Notice what he says. Hey, this work God started in you, doesn't matter whether you're in a pit or out of the pit. This work that God has started in you through his son, Jesus Christ, he's going to keep performing it until the day of his son, Jesus. So, uh, Paul says, I, Paul is expressing his confidence. I've been in the pit, but I'm confident in this. God's faithful. Amen. God's going to see me through. So he waited on the Lord. He waited patiently, knowing that God would not fail him. Now, Peter actually wrote something about this. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. I love this verse. Peter said, but the God of all grace, who hath called uh, me unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, will make you perfect, 
established and strengthen and settle you. Oh, praise God. I like that. You know, I have, I've stood on that scripture many times when it seemed like that I was just being buffeted every which way. And I love that last part, especially, he will settle you. Amen. Now, folks, he's not going to settle you in the pit. When he settles you, he's going to put you on a rock. And that rock is his son, Jesus Christ. And so, praise God. God is faithful. So, uh, one thing that David, uh, David learned was he, he waited patiently for the Lord. I am in a pit. But here's the thing I know. I know that God is going to get me out. You see, Job even knew that. You remember what? You remember Job, uh, chapter 2 in Job. And uh, Job was sitting there. He had lost his sons, his daughters, his houses, all of his flocks. He was broken out and boiled all over his body, sitting in a pile of ashes with a broken piece of pottery, scraping his running sores and his wife says unto him do you still retain your integrity she said curse god and die i love what job said but job looked at her and he said you speak as a foolish woman speaks amen he said he told his wife he said you speak like a foolish woman and later job said though he slays me yet will i trust in him why because Job knew the faithfulness of God. God will not fail you. God will not fail you. And God has not forgotten you. You know, that's another good part of it, is the fact that we know from the Word of God that God's paying attention to your life. God knows you're in the pit. Amen. If you're in the pit, brother, sister, God knows you're in the pit. And uh, just like the three Hebrew children, uh, God knew they were in the fiery furnace. But guess what? He was in there. There's the fourth man in the furnace with them. And uh, if you're in the pit, you know what? God's there in the pit with you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And uh, he's, let, he's allowed you to be in the pit. You know why? Because you're going to get your faith strengthened. You're going to get your heart lifted up. You're going to get stronger in the Lord. You're going to grow in his grace and strength. You're going to grow in your experience with him where one of these days you're going to be able to say to somebody that you love and care about and they're going through something and they're in the pit and you're going to be able to hold their hand or look them in the eye and you're going to be able to say, hey, God's, God's with you in the pit. He knows you're in the pit. He's going to get you out of the pit. Wait patiently for the Lord. After you've suffered for a while, as Peter said, he's going to strengthen you, establish you, and, and, uh, and lift you up. Praise God. Now, the last thing I want to mention today is it doesn't matter how bad your pit is. God's going to get you out. God's going to be faithful. Some people, you know, some people, they say, uh, it's like when you talk to somebody about giving their heart to the Lord and they may say, oh, uh, you know, God would never forgive me. I, I've been a terrible sinner. I've been a terrible sinner. I've, I've done so many, so many things for so many years that God would never forgive me. And folks, I've been around people that at the end of their life and they'd lived the life of, of uh, ungodliness, maybe bad sinners, and they would think, well, you know, the Lord's never going to hear my cry. He's never going to answer me. I I've sinned away my day of grace. God can't save me. My sins are just too bad. Well, you know, that's a real good lie of the devil. And, and, and he'll tell you about that about your pit. No way to get out of this pit. This pit is so bad, there is no way to escape this pit. I'm in this pit, and, and I can't get myself out. My dad can't, my mom can't, my brother can't, my sister can't, my friends can't. Nobody can get me out of this pit. Oh, yes, God can get you out of this pit. 
wait upon the Lord and trust in him. Let him know what your needs are. Ask him to deliver you. He said, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it'll be opened unto you. Draw nigh to him, he says, and I'll draw nigh to you. Folks, those are all put in the Bible by the Holy Spirit. You know why? He want, God wants you to know that if you'll knock, he'll open. If you'll ask, you'll receive. If, you will, if you'll seek, you'll find. All of these things, God wants you to know that. God wants you to know he's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness if you ask him. Oh, praise God. Those people that tell me, well, God can never forgive me. I just have to tell them what God's word says. And it says, though your sins were scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Huh. So it doesn't matter how bad your pit is. David described his pit right here. He said it was a horrible pit. It was a horrible pit. But you know what? It wasn't so bad that God couldn't get him out. David waited patiently for the Lord. David had confidence in the Lord. David said, I know God's going to get me out of this. And folks, I want to tell you, God's going to get you out of the pit. Be ready for it. Be, be patient. Just have confidence in God. Give praise to God, even though you're not out of the pit. Just like Paul and Silas in the dungeon at midnight, they were still in stocks, they were still in the prison, but they lifted up their voices, they began to praise God, call upon God, and God sent an earthquake, shook that prison, those doors flew open, they walked out of that prison, they came out of that pit they were in. Amen. Same thing is going to happen to you. Praise God. He will lift you out of the pit. He will set your feet on solid rock, and that rock is Jesus. He will establish your path. He will give you a new song, a song of praise. Praise the Lord. Well, he's given you the blood that cleanses you from all sin. He's given you his word, which is the sword of the spirit. He's given you the Holy Ghost living inside of you, which is greater than he that's in the world. He's given, uh, Father's given you the intercession of his son, Jesus Christ, sitting in his right hand. Oh, I'm telling you, you are more than a conqueror. You're coming out of the pit and God's got great days ahead for you. Let's pray and give him thanks. Father, thank you right now. Lord, I know we go through the pit, and we all do. Sometimes we can't help it. We get in a pit. Father, I pray you would send this word that it would encourage and lift up and strengthen. I pray that even right now, Lord, maybe somebody that's in the pit is lifting their hands and saying, Father, thank you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for your faithfulness. And I know you're going to deliver me out of this pit. I'm watching for it to happen, and it's coming. I know it is. In Jesus' name, if you're a sinner, you're not a Christian, you need to get right with God because Jesus is at the very door. He's coming. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. He said, though your sin is a scarlet, he'd forgive you. Ask him right now. Find a church and get in it. And God bless you all till we see you next week. God bless.